Hello everyone, this is Alice Gao. In this video, I'm going to discuss the answers to two clicker questions, one on slide 19 and the other one on slide 20 in lecture 23. Both clicker questions are about the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium of the dancing or concert game. So this is another coordination game, except that the two players have different utilities for coordinating on the two um, on the two actions. And we are going to derive the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So the correct answer here is that the role player prefers taking the top action with two third probability, and then the column player prefers taking the left action with one third probability. Let's take a look at the derivation. So we're deriving a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, which means we have two probability distributions, one over the actions of the row player, Alice, and the other one over the actions of the column player, Bob. Because there are two actions, so we need one probability to specify each distribution. So let's start by assuming that Alice goes dancing, so chooses the top action with probability P, and then Bob chooses the left action with probability Q. I've also labeled the utility matrix with these probabilities, so we can use those for our calculations later. Now, as I explained in the main lecture video, when we're deriving a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, because each player is is mixing between the two actions. That means the two actions must give the player the same expected utility, right? This is the main principle you need to remember. And this requirement is going to help us to derive conditions on these probabilities. So we have two separate conditions. One is that the two actions gives Bob the same expected utility, and the other one is that the two actions give Alice the same expected utility. The first condition is going to help us derive P, and the second condition is going to help us derive Q. Okay, let's look at the first condition. So the first condition, Bob is indifferent between the two actions, so let's calculate Bob's expected utility for playing each action. The top one is dance, the first one is dancing. So if Bob is going dancing, let's highlight what's happening here. We are looking at the left column and then we're looking at Bob's utility, which are one and zero. So if Alice goes, also goes dancing, Bob gets a utility of one. If Alice goes to a concert, Bob gets a utility of zero. Right, so now what are the probability for these to happen? Well, Alice goes dancing with probability P. In that case, Bob gets a utility of one. Alice goes to a concert with probability one minus P. Bob gets a utility of zero. So the total is P. And for concert is very similar. So we'll highlight, in this case, we're looking at the right column. And if Alice so let's take a look. With probability P, Alice goes dancing. In that case, Bob gets a utility of zero. With probability one minus P, Alice goes to a concert and Bob gets a utility of two. So the total of that is two minus two P. Equate these two together, we get that P is equal to two third. Okay, you can see that all we have to do is look in the utility matrix, find the right numbers, calculate the expected utility, equate them, and then we can derive the probability. The process for the second one is very similar. Let's go through that. So for the second one, what's Alice's expected utility if she goes dancing? Well, in that case, we are looking at the top row, right? This is the top row where she goes dancing. In that case, with probability Q, Bob goes dancing as well. And Alice gets a utility of two. With probability one minus Q, Alice goes to a concert and, uh, sorry, Bob goes to a concert and Alice gets a utility of zero. 
So the total is 2Q. What about if Alice goes to a concert? In this case, we are looking at the bottom row. So for the bottom row, well, with probability Q, Bob goes to ghost dancing and Alice gets utility of zero. With probability one minus Q, Bob goes to a concert and Alice gets a utility of one. So the total is one minus Q. Again, equate them together, we get that Q is equal to one third. So previously when I explained the requirements, I said that Alice is going to choose P to make Bob indifferent between the two actions. And Bob is going to choose Q to make Alice indifferent between the two actions. Now you might find this counterintuitive. You might think when Alice is choosing P, why does she have to think for think about Bob? Or when Bob is choosing Q, why does he need to think about Alice? So if you find this counterintuitive, you can simply drop the choosing P and choosing Q part. All you need to remember is the two things I've, uh, the two sentences I've written on the, on the page here. So remember that each player needs to be indifferent between the two actions. Okay, so as long as you use this to calculate, to write out the expressions and equate them, then it just ends up being that the condition on Bob, right? The first, the, the first one I've highlighted here, the condition on Bob, help us to derive the mixing probability for Alice. And then the condition on Alice helped us to derive the mixing probability for Bob, right? That's all is happening. All right, that's everything for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.